All right. Welcome here. This is Crispy, otherwise known as Bystander X99, and got this week's deck profile for you guys. All right. At long last, I'm actually going to be doing my Counter Fairy deck profile. Um, sorry for the delay. For those who've been waiting for it, um, but I kind of was waiting on what to see, what we we're going to get back with the ban list. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to get right to it. First, the monsters. Alright. Okay. Alright, I run three Bountiful Artemis in my Counter Fairy deck. Now, Bountiful Artemis is actually kind of a linchpin card, which is why I like to run them at three. Um, anytime a Counter Trap is activated, whether it's yours or your opponent's, um, you draw a card. So this, this card is actually your draw power for the deck. Um, cool thing about it is that it doesn't matter whose counter trap it is. It could be yours, your opponent's. You're drawing a card whenever a counter trap is activated. Okay. Next card is also a three of. And it is Guiding Area Dean. Now, uh, Guiding Area Dean is also very key to the Counter Fairy decks because of its Pendulum effect. Basically, when it's in your Pendulum scale, you are not paying costs to activate your Counter Traps. No discarding cards, no paying life points. You just activate the Counter Traps and you go from there. Um, its Monster Effect is actually also very good and it's, it's kind of the core... Um, abusable effect that I actually love to use in this deck. Um, basically, whenever it's destroyed, you choose three counter traps from your deck. Opponent selects one to add to your hand. The others are shuffled back into your deck. Um, so, it actually allows you to turn around and get counter traps from your deck into your hand really quickly. Um, because of this, because it's whenever it's destroyed, that means if, if it's destroyed in battle or even when it's on the as part of the scale, if it's destroyed as dead, you're getting its effect. Alright, and since it's a pendulum monster, there are many ways you can actually get it from your extra deck to the field or back again. Alright. Alright, next card is a two of. I run two count copies of Honest. Honest is the hand trap for light attribute decks. Alright. Basically, whenever your Light Attribute Monsters battle, you can discard this card during your damage step, and the monster that's battling gains the attack of your opponent's monster that is fighting. Very good. Um, and the reason why it's at 2 is because it's only semi-limited right now on, on the ban list. Um, other cool thing about it is that it's actually pretty... You can actually tech, tutor it out of the deck pretty easily. Um, I'll explain that when I get to the spell card that actually can help you with that. Alright. And because I've run the Guiding Area Dean's, I complete the scale. Because Konami still refuses us to give us the other half of the Counter Fairy scale here. So I use Luster, Pen Luster Pendulum, the Dragon, the Draco Slayer, which basically has a great Pendulum effect. Basically, whenever you have this card in the other scale, you're allowed to pop your guiding area dean i'll put it right there all right so you use this to pop this and then because this is popped you get this you get to turn around and search for a counter trap and even get another copy off of this effect it's a it's a great starter combo um makes the guiding area dean's monster effect very abusable um and it helps complete the scale All right. Now I run two copies of Mateel, the Sage of the Sky. Mateel is another awesome card. It's, it's kind of like Battle for Armas. Whenever a counter trap is activated, doesn't matter if it's yours or your opponent's, you're getting a thousand life points. Um, very handy against burn decks. Uh, Trick Stars are kind of a big deck right now. I think it's like the number two deck in the meta. Um, 
behind Pendulum Magicians. Um, cool thing about it is that it gains an extra effect if you have the Sanctuary in the Sky field spell on the field. If you have that on the field, um, whenever you activate a counter trap, not only are you gaining a thousand life points, but you also are popping a card off the field. Really cool. Really cool, which means this is, adds a little bit more of a control element to your to your field, and it can actually help keep your opponent from building scales or taking out the big mo bigger monsters, or even clearing out their back row. So it's very useful. But the reason why is that too, because we now have Minerva. Minerva here is at three. All right, just like Mateo, Minerva has two effects. The first effect goes off whenever you. A counter trap is activated, whether it's yours or your opponent's, and basically it gains 500 attack and defense. So this right here is your beat stick of your de of the deck. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a little four. It only starts off at 1700, but a couple of counter traps go off. It's gonna get big real fast. Um, cool thing about it is that if, again, if the sanctuary in the sky is on the field, you're allowed to grab a, a counter trap from your graveyard that has a different name from the one that you just. That, that was just activated and added back to your hand. So you're actually getting a um, good recycle of things. So not only does this thing get big, it's also going to get you back to counter traps, which basically keeps fueling its effects. Alright, now that's my monster lineup. On to the spells. Alright. Monster Reborn, you gotta play this. It's a staple card now. It basically gets you back. It basically gets you back a monster from the graveyard. Um, you can bring back an honest with this card from the graveyard that you already used, and you can use honest on field effect to actually bounce it back to hand. That's a very good play. Um, or you can just bring back a Minerva or a Mateel or a Bountiful Artemis that was destroyed, and so you can actually have some more resource, build your resources a little bit more. But otherwise, this is a must run. All right. Some more draw power for the deck. Triple power of duality. This deck uses his normal summons pretty well. Um, it doesn't really special summon as much, even though it, I do have a pendulum engine. That pendulum engine is more for popping, guiding area Dean to really search out counter traps. Um, this power, power of duality. What can I tell you? It's um, a great card. I use it in practically almost all my decks. Um, dig into your decks three times by three cards. Pick the card you need for the situation. And shuffle the other two back. Yeah, it costs you your special summons, but you know what? There are times you're not going to be special summoning. You're just going to be normal summoning, so use this card. All right. Now I have three copies of Terraforming. Everybody knows what that does. It searches your field spells. Um, and the field spell, I've mentioned it several times already. I'm going to push that up to the top is the Sanctuary in the Sky. I actually like running this car, the field spell over the continuous um, spell that was in the recent Wave of Light stru structure deck. The primary reason why I like the field spell is that it's actually a bit more searchable than that card. Um, the other thing is, is that as long as this card's face up on the field, you gain those extra effects from Mateel and Minerva. And the other thing about it is that if your fairy type monsters are involved in a battle, you're not taking battle damage. And to me, that's the huge boon for this field spell. Um, the continuous spell eats up back row, and you need as much... And since you're running the pendulum, a full pendulum scale in this deck, you're going to need as much back row for your counter trap. So, opt for this card always. Okay, and the last card that I like... And that should be running this bell. Well, in this bell is is basically the Ties of the Brethren. Now, the reason it, Ties of the Brethren is actually a very great field builder spell for this deck. Um, I can't tell you how much I love opening with it and just getting a lot of my monsters onto the field at once. Um, basically, you target one level four light attribute since all, well, that you have on the field, and basically all my monsters are level level four light attribute fairy type monsters. So you're, just, you're not going to have an issue activating this card. Target one of them that just no normal summon, and then you can special summon two others out. I mentioned this with Honest. This is a great way to tutor, tutor out Honest out of your deck because you can special summon Honest onto the field, and then you use his on-field effect to bounce it back to your hand. Um, I've done that many times, 
and it's always worked out because my opponent is then very, very, very hesitant to turn around and attack because he knows I have that hot, honest waiting to drop. All right. And of course, the main thing for Counter Fairy's deck that you need Counter Traps. All right. With the way the meta is right now, it's important to block Inherit Summon. So, Inherit Summons are basically those that don't start chains. And in this particular situation, Black Horn of Heaven does the job. Well, I'm really not targeting this in centered. Um, it blocks one normal, one special summon of your of of your opponent. So, it, yeah, it can't really block a pendulum summon, which can bring out mass, but. It can block Link Summons, which is very important for this for the current meta. Um, it can also block Synchro or Xyz Summons as well. So, it's this card is necessary to be running in this deck right now. Keep stuff off the field and keep you in control of the game. Speaking of control of the game, one little tech trap that I like to have in this, and the re and the primary reason why I'm running so many three three of three of copies of, of the traps is. Cursed Seal of the Forbidden Smell. Uh, what does this card do? Basically, without the scale of, you have to discard a spell card from your hand, and then it will negate the activation of your opponent's spell card. And, and this is the best part, it renders every other copy your opponent owns of that spell card completely and totally useless for the rest of the duel. It basically makes... So if your opponent is, is very big on using spell cards, I know that... Um, not that much back row right about now. A lot more, a lot of decks, yeah, use just monsters and, sp and spells. You hit certain spells. You're basically tur turning those spells into dead draws. That's why it's here. I can't tell you how great this card is in this deck. Just go out and try it. All right. So with the scale, you don't have to discard anything. With without the scale, that's the reason why I'm running so many three ofs. So you can have tri discard fodder for this card. All right, and of course, I run the other card that comes back off the list, Solemn Judgment. With the scale, you're not paying any life points. Without the scale, you're paying half your current life points, but you can get a, spe a, a summon, a spell, or a trap. Um, it's a very without the scale. It's a very skill-based card. With the scale and with Minerva. You could be abusing this card over and over again. Um, in my opinion, I guess Konami didn't want to give us th this card back in the structure deck to tip their hand about the ban list. Um, I think Konami actually missed their chance to actually get this card back into circulation. Um, with the deck, I mean, even if it tipped their hand about if they're going to bring it back or not, um, I really don't care. They, Konami missed their chance to get this more copies of this card back into circulation so more players can use it. Um, experienced players like myself, yeah, we've had multiple copies of this deck, especially if you play traditional format like I used to do. Unfortunately, Konami doesn't support traditional format, so nobody really plays it. But it's fun to have. Alright, of course, Silent Packet is not anything without Silent Strike. It also blocks Inherit Summons, but also blocks Monster Effects. Um, cost is 1,500 life points without the scale. With the scale, it's, it's free, so... Enjoy your negations. And of course you have Silent Warning. What can I say? Warning blocks, summons, blocks effects that can summon. It's part of the Silent Suite. Needs to be there. Alright, the last card I run. Three copies. Count them. Three of Ultimate Providence. Alright? Ultimate Providence basically can negate, can negate monster effects, spells, or trap effects. Um, there is a different, there is another trap that does the same thing, but it requires the field spell to be up. Now that we we might be going back to maybe a slower paced game, we might be seeing a little bit more back row hate, like with twin twisters and stuff like that. Um, so that's the whole reason why I'm going with this because your opponent can pop this field spell and then render uh, divine judgment useless until you get another field spell up. So with ultimate providence. Um, and the scale, you can at least turn around and start negating things. Now, if you don't have the scale, it's going to make you discard a monster to negate a monster effect, a spell to negate a spell effect, and a trap to negate a trap effect. 
Um, since I run a lot of three ofs, it's easy of spells. It's easy to turn around and negate spell effects. I run about 15 monsters in there, so you're, yeah, there probably might be some monsters in your hand, so it could be easy to negate those effects. And of course, you have your counter traps. And since Minerva is around, you can actually just recycle stuff like that. All right, so that's it for the main deck. It's a 41 card main deck. All right. Um, you might not be very yeah, comfortable with playing that, but I can tell you right now, the deck is very good with, in this regards. Um, you really don't see the difference. As for the extra deck, extra deck is most... I only have a 12-card extra deck. Um, you can fill out the remaining spots with whatever you need, but mostly it's going to be rank 4 toolbox stuff and then links, link, link monsters. Um, so I'll just show you what I run in the, in the rank 4 toolbox. Abyss Dweller. Blocks, graveyard effects, um, can sell, uh, flip stuff face down, bounce stuff off the field, um, dark rebellion dragon, cut a monster, cut a big monster's attack in half, and be able to swing over it. Um, I actually run a three card utopia package in this extra deck. Um, primary reason why it's at three at three cards is because all the Utopia cards are actually light attributes, so they can actually benefit from Honest. Um, the other reason why Utopia Ray here actually it's about actually can allow you to use Utopia Lightning's effect twice. So just in case you don't swing for game with Utopia one time, you're bound to get it that, that second time. All right, Babusta. Can stall while you set up, and of course I have Tornado Dragon because rank four pop back row. Photo links since I'm running pendulums, yeah, it's gotta be here. Heavy Metal Falls got two copies of them. Um, what does he do? Whenever he slings something, you get you add a pendulum monster from your main deck to your extra deck face up. Um, you could pop a card on your field. Yeah, to draw a card, and if one of your scales happens to be popped, you can turn around and <laughs> move a card from your extra deck to your hand. And that last effect, I can tell you this right now, with guiding air eating, pop guiding air eating, move a card, yeah, move a card, which is probably going to be another guiding air eating that you move to the extra deck, back to your hand, um, search a counter trap, play the extra, yeah, extra... Getting everything in from your hand, pendulum summon out the first one, crash it into something, get another counter trap. It just opens up a heck of a lot of plays. Alright. Um, run Deco Talker, because it's actually a very good Link 3 monster. Gives, gives you three zones, uh, powers itself off, so it, you can actually make it pretty big. And it actually does help you out with the attack power problem this deck sometimes have. And last card, um, you have Skull Dread. Skull Dread is actually a great link for. Uh, you can actually build it with four materials. You can actually build it with two. You can build it with three. Um, can tell you, awesome card. Powers up monsters at points two. Um, that you summon to its zones. Um, allows you to just get you an extra special summon per turn. And it even allows you to draw four cards from your deck when, if you use four summon materials to summon it, draw four cards, and then you take, what was it, three of those cards, and, or three or, yeah, three of those cards and put them at the bottom of your deck. Let's see, three or four, let me see. Yeah, it's three. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Allows you to restock your hand, allows you to turn around and boost your monsters. It's a great card to have. Alright. So that's it. That is my Counter Fairy deck for the 2018 February format. I can't tell you how happy I am to actually be playing this deck. Um, I love the fact that a lot of the cards got reprinted in the wave of in the structure deck Wave of Light. Um, so if you're looking to actually build this deck, three copies of that deck, and you're good to go. Okay? Probably have to turn and spend some money for the extra deck, but still... Um, so, that's it for my deck. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
like the video, thumbs up, love the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be alerted whenever I throw up a new video. And I'll be seeing you guys in the, in the next one. Peace out.